video is going to cover uh, the actual control panels themselves. I was asked by uh, one of the viewers and I told him I'd kind of show it because I thought I had information and I went back and looked through some of the older videos and I got frustrated and bored trying to find it so I'm sure no one else is going to want to look through it all. So I'll make this separate video, put it in the uh, you know controls electronics playlist so it's there as a separate one for those that may be interested in uh, specifically what we did for the control panels. Now I'm going to warn you at the end of the video I'm going to show you the exact invoice, the actual invoice that they got for these and your head's probably going to explode. This is not an inexpensive way to do it. Knew that going in and again, you know, say, you know, I had some money saved up after being deployed to Afghanistan that specifically I wanted to save and spend on the layout so I made the call to go with this and uh, we wanted more professional looking control panels um, didn't want to do like on the last layout I done I done I had made them you know with the masonite similar to what we're using here for the fascia and painted it and drilled holes in it and it just didn't look that good not that you can't do a good job you absolutely can this is not the only way to do it by far it's just the way that we wanted to go I did not want a, a masonite board with painted lines or using drafting tape and drilling holes and that it just it's just not what I wanted if you're more skilled than I am you probably could do a, a fine job and there's a lot of examples of really nice control panels out there that uh, you could do with a lot less expensively let me say that but again time is money in some respects and I decided to to spend money as opposed to spending time uh, other than painting these which I'll, I'll show you in a moment all right so anyway enough of that again you're gonna be surprised how much these cost and you're gonna think we're nuts just get over it and we got over it we went we moved ahead and we enjoy it so <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say that's all I have to say about that so these boards are actually 1 8 inch acrylic and they are reverse engraved and what that is I'm sure some folks are well aware of that this is the, the actual acrylic piece this is actually when they first made the company I'll talk about first made this one for me there was a flaw and they just for free they re-ran this and, and sent it to me so now I have kind of a sample board that uh, we can look at so that's the front again it's 1 8 inch thick acrylic and the, the beige tan color you see it's actually beige is kind of the base color and what they do then is on the back side and it's gonna look a little bit weird not because we painted it but they actually engrave all the lettering the you know the, the outline on the control panel and obviously on the bigger boards and that's where they actually engrave of course the the lines as well and you can see we've had these painted but uh, it's just it's just clear so when you get it back you get your board back and everything looks clear you can see right through it it basically engraves through the base color and it's clear and then allows you the user to paint the letters the lines whatever color you would like and this was a kind of a test board where Steve and I went around and tried different colors and you can see you don't have to be super neat you can see how it you know, looks kind of sloppy there in the back, but then you don't see that when you look at it from the front side. So it, it's it's easy to do, I'll say that. You know, you, you, We picked the colors, and I'll kind of real briefly go to the workbench and show you the colors that we used. You can paint it. Obviously, you got to be careful somewhat when you get close together, but for the most part, you, you can see how sloppy we were. But then if you look at it on the front side, it just looks like, you know, different color paints so it's kind of fun it was actually a lot of fun to go through and pick the colors Steve picked all the colors I think he did a really nice job he picked them out and uh, we painted them up it did take a couple coats uh, to paint these up on most of the paints and sometimes I don't think it's gonna work here with the you can see you see that you can almost kind of still see through it so it is still you know a, a little bit uh, see-through uh, but Again, do the letters look like that? Yeah, you, see, you can see there's like, oh my gosh, it looks terrible. But when you actually get it down and installed, you really can't even tell. So you can see how that how that looks. So 
that's the one eighth acrylic on the on this board here where we put the DCC command station he actually they actually you know engraved it out for me put a little recess in there so that I could actually you know screw that in with some hardware so overall we're very happy with it now of course once you get these you got to pick your paints and paint them but that was actually a lot of fun that was really really enjoyable and then you need something to mount them to um, when I had the contractor do the room for me since he was a he's an excellent woodworker I had to make up all of the different control panels. you can see they're all made out of wood and they're all you know kind of angled nice and then he actually for the you know mount, mount them for me put the little hardware here to hold them up you could do a lot of different stuff obviously and if you're skilled you probably could make this up yourself but I'm just not the best woodworker so he made them for me um, you know, I had uh, I drilled holes through here and mounted them with some little tacks, and there they are. So there's the the three big boards. There's the Eugene East board here, which is down to show you the the innards of it, and this is the Eugene West board. And it came all pre-drilled. You know, I I measured everything and, and drew it up. So you know, all the switches I knew exactly what any LEDs. So all I had to do is pretty much install everything and of course wire everything up. That's the Pittsfield board and they were able to actually engrave the GE meatball for me. And that's how it looks again when it's painted from the back side. Different colors, main line in blue and the other uh, kind of the spur siding side tracks in, in a gray color. Again that was all Steve's choice and I really really commend him. He did a, I think a great job picking the colors for that. Then the littler, the smaller boards. Again, that's, you've seen it all before. That's the one for Wallace Junction. And finally, I'll just kind of do a zoom from over here. That's the one for CP97. So basically, the two smaller boards, three large uh, boards, and then the one board that we used as the main DCC command station and for the three R ramp meters that are mounted in there and they cut them out did a nice job it fit perfectly um, when we had this done it was no issue whatsoever to get those R ramp meters mounted in there just mounted up with some hardware and the control I'm sorry the command, command station fit right in perfectly all the hardware holes were, were drilled very nicely uh, very well done by the company that made it for me. So let me just do a quick pause. Well, I'll tell you what, you get to look at the back there for a moment. This is hard to do with one hand. All right, so that's that. So now let's go take a look at the colors we used, just in case you're interested. And then I'll show you the drawings that we did, uh, the company that we used, and wrap this puppy up with uh, the shocking invoice of what we paid for all the shenanigans. Okay, so here's the color palette that we used for the boards, the ones that we settled on. You can see they're just simple craft paints. Um, the border, which is around here, the one that we settled on, it's kind of a, a nice uh, foresty green type color, is exactly called, which one is it? This one right here, Green Forest. Folk Art Green Forest. That's the, the main border around all the boards. The main lines are colored in Admiral Blue. The sidings are covered, uh, painted with graphite. Get my cheat sheet here. The main lettering, such as you know, Mainline West and the uh, kind of the uh, well, it's kind of a burnt umber looking color because it is. It's uh, this is actually out of the tube, uh, burnt umber. The black, like for in here where it says uh, voltage and current display, that's just a black color. For the uh, AC present, DCC present, used this true red and an old ivy. So those are the colors that we used. And I have a little cheat sheet here that I kept in case we ever need to redo anything. And like I said, you can see how you know it looks very nice. And you don't need to worry because there's a back side of that that, uh, that again looks like oh, it looks horrible get this there you can see how we painted that and you don't need to worry about going over and whatnot because you're never going to see anything that's not inside the actual letters or the lines and you can see how 
how far off, so to speak, we were. So that's why it was really easy and fun to paint this. And this was kind of our sample read, like where we tried a bunch of different stuff, mostly for the lines, to pick what we, what we wanted to do for the main lines and for the uh, spur tracks, yard tracks, etc. So those are the paints we used, just simple craft store acrylic paints. And that's the look you get. It looks really nice. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, you can see we're on the main line, we're playing with different colors. So you could do different letters. You could do something really crazy, different color for every letter. The only limit is your imagination. All right, so with that, now we're going to go take a look. Uh, I did a little, some screen capture stuff, and we'll take a look at the actual the drawing that I made up. I did make up a, a drawing for this to send to the, to the vendor that made it for me. Give you the name of the vendor, phone number, contact information, and I said wrap it up with the crazy price that we paid. No, seriously, it, it was quite a bit, but uh, like I said, we, we knew it, we wanted it. And we made a conscious decision. And another nice thing, just before I noticed, this board I use is practice. You can see I was practicing drilling holes. Since it was a you know a, a scrap board, an extra board, I could I could try different stuff. I wanted to verify, you know, could I actually drill a hole without messing it up and cracking it and doing all kinds of horrible stuff to it. And you can. It drills nice. It drills easy, just with a normal hand drill. My cordless Craftsman drill, drilled it fine. Uh, this one I did pull off, but when you get them from the vendor, there's a protective sheet on it that actually most of the ones in the layout still have. But I took it off of this one just because I wanted to see what it looks like. And it's, it, it is pretty durable. There's the actual blemish. It's really hard to see that I told them about, and they made me a whole new board. So, again, the, the vendor was very good to work with. All right, let's go take a look at the, uh, the drawing, the vendor, and the invoice. So here is the drawing that I made up and uh, sent to the company. And you can see I actually drew it up in SolidWorks. This is just a PDF. It's just easier to show. But I did make some notes up. I did tell them the you know the size of the sheet, the background cover, uh, the font, and some just some other notes and some hole spacings and whatnot. And then each of the three main boards, the two small boards. That's a little Lake City spur switch that I that I do have. I, I don't show the DCC board, but it was the same thing. It was just a different drawing. And you can just kind of see that I detailed out for them. I'll make it nice and large here. You know, the different boards. And I drew the different track arrangements. They actually were able to make the GE logo for me. And I just kind of drew in, this is just for my reference, that's where the actual, the size of the actual switches are going to be for the turnouts. And you can see it's all dimensioned. And then I sent this down to, uh, to the company as a DWG file. They could open it. They actually, you know, worked on it and measured things out. And we went back and forth a couple times with some information on the fonts and how they could fit stuff, especially in the smaller fonts and lettering here, you know, with the machine in hand and, and whatnot. It looks kind of kludgy here, but they were able to do it. And then they sent me a proof print. And I approved it, and they went ahead and printed it for me. So you, you, you will have to come up with some type of drawing. Like I said, I did happen to have solid work, so that's how I drew it up and sent it to them with notes and dimensions, and I told them the different lines. And then they make it, they engrave it, and as we'll see, you know, then you have to paint the back of it the whole sheet is one base color. In our case, it was beige. And then you decide on what colors you want, and you paint the back of it. It uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, a little bit pricey. I'll, I'll kind of cover the prices as well. But uh, I, we knew it was going to be that way. We wanted a professional-looking control panel. You certainly can do it a lot less expensively than this. And other folks might not care to go to this level, and that's perfectly fine. I've seen a lot of boards with masonite and and paint and whatnot. And to me personally, they just don't look all that good. And again, just since we were doing this and we're going to do it, you know, redo it and do it once and hopefully do it uh, for the last time. I <laughs> uh, wanted to make sure things looked as professional as possible, so that's why we decided to go this way. Very happy with it, but again, it will cost money. It, it's not not a cheap date. So that you can see the different boards. How we dimensioned them, 
It said these were then saved into a DWG format, and I just emailed them down to to the company, and uh, away we went. So that is that. Here's the website of the company that we used, Precision Grit Etching and Engraving. They're down at Oakmont, just outside Pittsburgh. Very good to work with. Like I said, what we got here was the reverse engraved and back paint filled. That's the product that we went with, and they were very good to work with. Uh, Tom Dapra was uh, outstanding. Actually, he is an O-Gage model railroader. Because as he started looking at the drawings, I sent him, he said, are you doing something for a model railroad? Because it looks kind of like, like you are. And I said, how would you know that? He goes, well, I'm kind of into O-Gage. So it worked out very well. He understood what we were trying to do and was able to work with us very well. Uh, their contact information, that's the phone number. They're, only, they're a smaller company, so they only have one, one phone number, and that gets right down to them. And you can talk to Tom, and he would certainly be willing to help you out. It's been a while, but you could perhaps mention us and the panels he made for us. He might remember. We actually had these done back in July of 2014. So it's getting close to two years now. So he might not remember. But he certainly would uh, have an idea if you talked to him about what you wanted to do. So I recommend him. Probably a lot of other people that can do this type of work. Obviously, in a different area of the country, you're going to want to try to find someone closer to you. Maybe even someone you can stop down and talk to. Uh, there was no one around here that, that I found that was reasonable around Erie. And these guys were willing to work with me. And it was, you know, obviously a smaller uh, one-off custom type order. And they were, they, they were very good to work with. So I do, do recommend them. I assume they would still do it. I said it has been two years. But when we worked with them, they were very, very accommodating. All right, here it is. Like I said, I'm going to show you exactly what I paid, as crazy as we are. Uh, this is the actual invoice. In, uh, this was back on, let's see, you know, middle of July 2014. All right, these three are the three main boards, the Eugene East, Eugene West, and the Pittsfield board. They were $240 each. So you can see how much that lovely one cost. Then this one here is the main DCC board with the three are our ramp meters that was 220 these two are the ones for CP 97 and for Wallace Junction they were 145 this little one that I probably could have gone without but that's the little one for Lake City Spur which I haven't even put in yet that was 35 bucks 11 bucks to ship it for a grand total of you got it $1277.16 like I said, not necessarily a cheap date. Um, could you do better? Probably. Do you have a friend in a business? Probably get a better price. But again, with, with a small rate, and since this uh, you know, this company was good to work for, we made the call and went with it. Some folks, I'm sure, are falling over in their chairs, throwing their phones against the wall, saying we're crazy. That's okay. We are. And again, I had money saved up to do this kind of stuff, and I knew it was going to be pricey to get exactly what I wanted so there you go that's what it was if you're thinking about it that's uh, what you know roughly the range you're probably going to be in if you think about what it is and what you get for it uh, you know for $240 for one panel like that mm, I don't know is that uh, crazy maybe it is maybe some folks out there know some other f uh, companies or that you go to that are much more reasonable but Again, I did some research, and you got, you got to make a call. you got to move forward, and, and we did. So that's what we did, and that's what we paid for it, exactly what we paid for it. So that was uh, information that I wanted to pass on. So if you're curious and you're looking at the magnitude of what you uh, might be spending to do something like this, that's what it is.